Kingsley Amukamara. Yes, you said it right. First time? Hell yes. How many, how many times did you practice that? <laughs> Bro, I, I fought it so many times. So many times. In my sleep, my wife heard me and like, I'm a Kamara. I'm a <laughs> so I'm so Some people happy. type it into Google and let uh, Google try to say it for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I wonder, does Google say it right or they're like, I'm a Kamara? No. Uh, You're like, how did you? <laughs> They're like, it means no worry for the rest of your days. <laughs> oh, my. oh man. so what what is by the way, it's if you don't let it intimidate you, it's mm-hmm. easy to pronounce, I think. Oh yeah. It just, oh yeah. It it's self-explanatory. Just, just how it exactly. Just read it straight just across. Roll on through. That's what <laughs> that's what you gotta do. But I was gonna ask, <laughs> what does a mukamara mean? Does it have a, a special significance or um it it depends on how you say it uh my dad told me there's two different meanings one is like super raunchy and the other one (laughs) means like um something with the lord and jesus and something (laughs) oh okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. so one side is jesus the other one's tits or something like that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some yeah something like that but it's like uh, like if you pronounce it the wrong way it means like a like a i don't even want to say it because <laughs> I, I, sw- I swore i swore i was like i'm gonna keep this a secret for the rest of my life <laughs> but it means uh but whatever it means um if you say it the wrong way it means big penis like oh. i know <laughs> so, like it's the craziest thing when he told me that and like i even like i was like i thought it was just bullshitting but then like yeah. we used to have these nigerian meetings and i would ask him like hey what is um you know what does amukamara mean and then uh-huh. like the guys like our uncles they'll just be like <laughs> i'm <laughs> like <laughs> so i was like okay that's i'm keeping i'm taking that to the grave so but Ew. not anymore. I dug it up. Fuck it. <laughs> you, you dug it up and you threw it into the crowd. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, wow. That's now it's yeah, public. Yeah. It's out in the airwaves in a podcast. People know how to say big dick in. Is it it's, Nigerian? <laughs> the language? Yeah. Uh, no, it's um, it's Ibu. That's the uh, that's the native language. Ibu. Do you speak yeah. Ibu at all? No, I. They tried teaching me in, uh, when I was younger, but. I was like, yeah, I'm going to stick with English. <laughs> I just love that. Yeah. Yeah, like, English is pretty practical for me. I got so my ABCs and one, two, threes down, so I'm going to stick with the, <laughs> stick with the English. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. It's so crazy to me how many languages are spoken in different countries in Africa. I remember, yeah, right. I, remember I was at in California with one of my friends and he was telling me, he introduced me to this guy from Ethiopia mm-hmm. and the dude just spit out fluent Italian. And I was, I was oh, shocked. Yeah. I should mention that I speak Italian too. Cause that, that would be very random. And no. he's like, yes, this is John. And he's like, well, I'm Laura. I'm American. I don't know. I don't look like a Ma- I'm not a Mario. So. Yeah, I'm not a Mario. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was so cool, man. We so we spoke Italian for a little bit, and I was like, "How the how did you learn Italian?" And he's like, "Yeah, in yeah. school, that was the primary language." So yeah, just yeah, so learned actually, it. That's super true because uh, some of my cousins out. I, I went and visited. Um, when did I go out there? My last. Uh, I was a senior in high school, and they spoke fluent like French. They spoke French. Damn. So I was just like, so weird. Cause, but you know, Africa's like right below them. So I was like, that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> I also I hate. I'm nothing against your family and cousins and everything, but the French <laughs> language. I oh, yeah, hate yeah. the French language. My wife so thinks it's the most attractive language. She's like romantic, so sexy French. And I'm like, dude, I speak fluent Italian. And that, <laughs> no, people uh, go, people are allowed to be on a boat with you and sing while they're paddling you. That, like, <laughs> in any other language, that would be creepy, but it's yeah, right? not able to do it. 
<laughs> she's like, no, French, French. And I'm like, French, it literally sounds like yes. you're, you're, you're a cat trying to throw up a fur ball. <laughs> Like, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah they just like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just Bonjour. like, oh. <laughs> yo, you know, uh, they just balling up their throat just to <laughs> spit that <Yeah>. bee out. <laughs> Bonjour, comme ça va aujourd'hui? I, I, speak, <laughs> I speak French. I learned. I I took it through Rosetta Stone. Just oh, really? Prove, yeah, just Does to this prove to my wife Do that it. it works or. Really? It works. It <laughs> Obviously works. it works because you're speaking I will it. tell you, oh, wee oui, wee, oui, Mona me. It <laughs> definitely works. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking uh, hilarious. No, we, I, so I used to work for Rosetta Stone. And oh, okay. I, I, at the kiosks, I wasn't in corporate or anything. Oh. I was in my button up yellow, banana yellow shirt and khaki pants in the middle you, of the mall. Dwight Schrute? <laughs> 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 yeah i'd be like question which language do you want to learn today <laughs> yes. oh god bears oh, beats god. brazilian portuguese that's how it goes down <laughs> so, yes here's how it went down I learned, well, Spanish, I kind of learned it in middle school and elementary school yeah, all the way yeah. growing up. Don't really speak it at all. I, right. And I can say taco and shit, but other than that, not really. <laughs> Italian, I learned in college and I lived in Italy for a little while. And so okay. I got that shit down pat. Yeah. I could be like, dude, if they were like, oh, we are a man down on our gondola. Can you, can you <laughs> stop in? I'd be like, can you oh, take shit. Over? <laughs> uh, I'd be paddling and I'd be like da 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 start singing <laughs> so oh, I could do that. that that's how fluent I am in Italian but then yeah. I did Rosetta Stone for two languages I did for French and okay. I did French this is how I got because I knew my audience bro I went and you you had the big screen at the kiosk so people could see the, the stuff so then I Almost, saw yeah. All the moms that would go in the mall, because at the mall at like noon, nobody's there except for the soccer yeah. mom or the, the, the moms and stuff. So then I and would the do French. Ladies. Yeah, yeah. So then I would try to do the <laughs> most romantic language. I'd button down on my banana yellow shirt, like one button, make sure that my, my booty was popping out of the cat <laughs> pants. And then I'd just scream in French. I'd be like, ooh la la. And then so that would <laughs> attract them. So then I did all of it. I did the whole thing in French. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I was fluent for like two minutes. And then it just crashed down because I couldn't find anyone to speak it with. So here's the thing. <laughs> if you don't have anyone to speak it with, then you're going to lose it. Because then... You lose the language, yeah. I did. After that, I did, I did Brazilian Portuguese. So... Mm. I was in New Jersey at the time, and that was Newark, New Jersey. And okay. that was huge population of Brazilians. Yeah. So I was yeah, like, yeah. you know what? I'm not going to fuck up this time. I'm going to choose a language where there are people around me that speak it, and I'm just going to go, and I'm yeah. just going to integrate myself. I'm going to immerse myself. I'm going to penetrate that community <laughs> so hard. They're not going to know what hit them. They're like, oh, gringo. So I went in and then I started speaking Portuguese after I did the program. And then I, you, it does work is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But you sound a little bit like a robot and that, cause that's how they teach you. It shows the picture and then it reads what the picture is or says what the picture is. So it'll show a boy okay. eating an apple. And then it says, o menino está comendo a maçã. So then that's how I sounded. I was like, Oh, wow. like oh, <laughs> my name is Stefan. How are you today? <laughs> so, so then that, that's how I met my wife. And God, that was interesting because she was like, don't ever speak Portuguese ever again. <laughs> Sound out. like an Android. And I was like, well, oh. how do you know that I am not? So <laughs> that's how I hooked her in. The intrigue, yeah. the mystery. It's like, hmm. This yeah, guy. she had just seen she had just seen Bicentennial Man, so she was like, "Well, Robin Williams was a robot. Maybe this guy's a robot." So, it it worked out well for me. But anyway, to answer your yeah. question, Rosetta Stone does work. I believe it. 
if you stick with it and then if you find people to speak with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I thought that is it so it's not like a requirement to work at Rosetta Stone to use it and learn a new language or was that just your no, thing? It was not a requirement, but I became the best salesperson in the country because the first question that people ask when they go in they're like how many languages do you know and then i'd be like i'd be like four and so i would tell them i'd be like look i learned italian in college i learned spanish in middle school i learned french and portuguese through rosetta stone and mm -hmm. this is the difference between all of them and this you can't actually learn and blah 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 and so yeah, yeah. I was able to just sell that shit. I was also a lot younger. And then I, I did leave the buttons. It was like <laughs> bare chest past practically. So I was also, I was trying to sell with sex, you know. but uh, you know, I, I'd be like, oh, are you interested in Portuguese? And then I'd pull it out of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I will never do that again. If you promise to buy, they're like, just take my money. Please. Here. Me, I, I, I want to get out of here. So uh, that's how it went down. But anyway, that you, you, it's not a requirement. And a lot of people didn't speak another language, but it yeah. was very useful to sell. So that's how it, it worked, works. man. Yeah, but anyway, good. what about you? What, are you originally from Phoenix or did you yeah, move I'm, here? I, f I feel like I'm the last native in Arizona. I was born and raised. Oh. <laughs> Hi, hi, 10. We're Double L. Yeah. Oh, you too? Hell yes. yeah. Wait, I, I feel like the Phoenix, it's like a scorpion high five. You got to do it from behind. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> <laughs> oh Next time God. we see each other in person, I think that's That's, have that's to our thing it. now. <laughs> <laughs> God, dude, that's amazing though. So you, yeah. you were born here. Did you ever mm -hmm. leave the nest or did you stay in Phoenix metro area the whole? The entire time. Yep. I live like, you know, I've lived in Phoenix, moved to Tempe for a little bit and then okay. just shuffled around. But then home base is, uh, I'm in Avondale now. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Where, I don't know where, where Avondale you at? is. You're probably I in like am... Gilbert then. No, I'm in North Phoenix. So I am right off by the 51 and the 101 where they meet. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That's not too far. Yeah, I'm like kind of near the um, the football stadium. Oh, okay. I yeah, know yeah. let's get. Yeah, let's get. Are you drink? I'm drinking. Uh, this is a white claw I had in my car for I think four weeks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, nice. Just cracked it open. Aged to perfection. That's <laughs> awesome. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Straight, straight vodka. That's been. Shut the <laughs> straight vodka. <laughs> how how Every... French are you? No, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> Salut. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not speaking French. I'm actually just gagging. I'm just but... <laughs> uh, so I used to drink. You know what? On special occasion, maybe I will, but it's been so long since I drank on a pod because I'll do yeah. like four or five a week. So uh, yeah, yeah. I was doing it and then I realized that my family gave me an intervention and they're like, you got to stop and just come out of these. You're stumbling down the stairs, oh. drunk. I don't know if you're speaking French or if you have to throw up, but it's just, <laughs> it's a problem, Steph. No, it's fine. Anyway, um... I've, I haven't, I've never drank or consumed a White Claw, by the way. It's, um, it's actually not bad. It's one of those slow creepers. I was just, I was so against it when it first came out. I was like, it's for white people, you know, it's <laughs> not our thing. Stick to what we drink. But no, I had it for the uh, first time and I was like, oh, it's like a, it's a good casual drink. If you're at a, like a chill party. Um, and you know what? Normally, I don't even drink like by myself or on my own. But since we're here together, I was like, "Fuck it, let's crack this shit open." Dude, this counts. This definitely counts. Yeah. And also, oh, yeah. are, do you get a cut? Because this is now being broadcast. This, this podcast <laughs> yeah. brought to you by White Claw. White Claw. Oh man. 
for and you defined it perfect do you do you have the target audience and you're like it's good for a nice chill party <laughs> the ideal occasion cool vibe Ten. you know like <laughs> 10 to 15 people max, you know, <laughs> pop music playing in the background. You sprinkle in some, you know, uh, oh, Selena gosh. Gomez. <laughs> yes. If there's a pinata, it's perfect with pineapple cherry. The perfect <laughs> flavor. If it's uh, 14 people, I would say a cucumber lime. That's the ideal flavor. Oh, yeah. If your grandpa's there, take whatever <laughs> flavor you can because grandpa's coming <laughs> after the White Claws. Oh, Clean in house. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh, well kingsley i was gonna ask about comedy how long have you been in comedy that's not how long have you been inside comedy and inside comedy. are been, you planning on escaping anytime soon uh, what? No, i've been i've been trapped in here for like 10 years now <laughs> <laughs> i'm gnawing off my arm to be able to get out i need to get out <laughs> no uh I've been in 10 years in the game. Uh, it's been, it's been a, a wonderful journey. Um, it's, it's, I've, I've opened for like a, a few D list comedians. Uh, my favorite person I opened for was, uh, was this? Ashley Larry, Donnell. Woo! Come on, Claus. Donnell Rawlings. That was, uh, Oh, did that. hell no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second year comedy. I was just like, all right, the goal. I'm going to open up for somebody big. So like, you know, you did, you just got to do your ass kissing. I was like, like, please, can I get on the show? I was supposed to do, I was actually supposed to open up for little Duval. Um, that I think it was in April, but then like he brought his own people and they're like, okay, you know, and he, I guess he felt bad. So he's like, okay, we'll get you on the next one. Donnell Rawlings. And I got to open. I was like, yes, did oh a decent, put a, God. did a good job. It was, it was amazing. It was dope. Dude, that's all aw- year two <laughs> of doing comedy. And you guys yeah. open for Donnell Rawlings. Oh yeah, yeah. That is amazing. And what it how did you feel when you first when you got up on stage? Were you like, holy shit, I am gonna open or I'm open. gonna because it was my first time at stand up live too. So I was like, fuck, okay. And and then they're gonna do give me a cold open. You know what I mean? So they weren't gonna so the host wasn't gonna go out first. I was going to go out and open and then the host and then they're going to start the show. But I was like, fuck. I was like, okay, I could do it, whatever. But then they switched it up last minute and they're like, okay, we'll go out. The host went out, warmed them up. And then I went out, did my thing. And then it was just, it was amazing. Like the biggest roars of laughter I've ever heard in my life. And then, um, amazing. just like, and I had, you know, friends and family out there and they're just like, so just super amazed of just like, the whole stand-up scene and just me doing they were more so they were more surprised that they weren't laughing at my jokes but they were just looking at the crowd and seeing the crowd laugh at my jokes that they were just like oh like this is this shit is fucking real <laughs> <laughs> that's a King, you weren't funny but we were laughing like, at the fact <laughs> that everyone else was laughing that everybody was dying laughing <laughs> you know? Dude, so that yeah. that is incredible, man. That's so cool. And then I was just gonna ask, how did you get into comedy in the first place? Were you just like, I'm hilarious. I need this is my calling, or uh, um, yeah, kind of. Like I've always had these like crazy funny stories that I always tell my friends, like real real shit that's happened in life. And like, yeah. you ever have something that's so crazy happened, you just gotta tell your friends. So, like, I would be on my way to my friend's house and, like, I'm prepping the story because I'm, like, trying to make it suspenseful, trying to make it funny, and just, like, pretty much just getting this set in my head of what happened that night, whether it was with, like, a one-night stand or just some, like, crazy, I don't know, some crazy shit that happened. And then Uh I would tell them the story, and then they would just, like, just seeing their faces, just, like, like, laughing and just so, like, in tune with, like, what I'm about to say. It was just, like, yeah, I think... I should try it. And then I've always wanted to be like Martin Lawrence. So nice. those two, I was like, okay, let me just put it together and just do stand up and then see what happens from there. That is so cool, man. <laughs> so cool. It just reminded me of the first time, the, fr- <laughs> the first time that I ever saw Martin Lawrence in a movie. Was, oh yeah. I think it was, it wasn't one of his best 
pieces. Just like a random it was, one. It was when he got thrown back into medieval times. <laughs> you know? I, I, I think it's called the Knight st- or Black Knight. <laughs> yes, that was a Black Knight. Black Knight. Yeah. And, and I, th- I was probably <laughs> nine years old. It was one of the best things I'd ever seen. I don't know if it ages too well, but I thought it was nah. hilarious. <laughs> Black Knight. Have you ever seen his uh, sitcom, Martin? No, I haven't. You haven't for no, seen? For no good reason either. Oh, my God. I don't know how it – I mean, no. It ages just fine because I follow, like, the Martin Lawrence, like, show on Instagram. And just them playing the clips has me dying. But, dude, you've got to see at least, like, three episodes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I Give ha- it a I shot. Have to check it out. You've got to. to. Nice. You, you and some other person – never seen martin before and i was just like it's just like the craziest thing just somebody not seeing it so dude i no, i know i know i'm i feel ashamed i shouldn't have even admitted it on the podcast <laughs> in front of everybody i'm gonna get loads of comments right? now if you're like yeah. you've never you seen martin what? lawrence <laughs> unsubscribed i'm changing my review to one star mr no, one star <laughs> Ooh, nah nah no 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 <laughs> Oh, oh God. God. So, so Martin, Martin Lawrence was a big influence. Did you have any other big influences that, that you looked up to as you were getting started or still look up to? Um, Cat Williams. Um, nice. Nice. Uh, I loved Cat. Yeah. Cat I did Williams. watch him. Okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> have you seen Cat? Have you seen Cat Williams? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, oh. I actually like I got a lot of good information or good advice from um Jerry Seinfeld and uh You Lucy got wait Gay. you got advice? Were they like, Oh sorry, not in Kingsley. person. Kingsley, <laughs> I gotta tell you something, Kingsley. What's the deal? That- <laughs> <laughs> spot on spot on impression. <laughs> that was my Louis CK. Do you wanna hear my Jerry? <laughs> I'm kidding. I was like, oh shit! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, but, oh God, holy shit! Wow. <laughs> but yeah, no. He, I was watching this video with him. I think it was him, Lucy K, and Chris Rock. They were just like sitting in a room, and um, his. Hopefully, Louis K's pants were on. No, they no. were. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I was pro- something was probably twitching in there. I don't know. <laughs> But um, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, it was like um, his, the saying was, "Stay in the bit." Like if it if a bit's going really good, if you just stay in there and just run around and just keep talking till the jokes like pretty much just not funny, then you can move on to your next set. Because before I would just run through my set regardless of the last. If it was like super good laughs, like I would just keep on trucking along and finish. But um taking that advice like if a joke is like killing it and it's like super funny just stay in there just play around in that joke and just try to just think of just random things you can say to like tag on to the joke or just make it funnier or just do something in it until the the last die down and then move on to the next joke and then that uh... makes for a longer set you know just i don't know i felt like i elevated after hearing that and just trying that in on the stage so that's that's really really good advice i love that because i i feel like everything is like not everything but especially when you're up in stage you really try to just be in the moment and that's a crucial thing of being in the moment of recognizing hey things are going (laughs) great for me right now I'll keep riding this wave, stay on the right. crest of laughter until right. the wave dives down and then just go on to the next thing. Whereas exactly. if you get off the wave too early, it might be a turbulent ride and going straight to the next joke, it might be a jolt for some exactly. people. And that's really, yeah, that's really, really good. It's almost like sex, really. It's like, <laughs> if, 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 if she's feeling good, you don't just come right yeah, there and then. <laughs> Go exactly. with the rhythm. Just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> take a breath. You know, take, just take a breather. If you if you're about to come, just wait. Yeah. Just wait. 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 
and then just go. <laughs> think, think of grandma. Think of grandma. Unless... <laughs> just think of some other shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Well, think of your favorite scene from Black Knight. There you go. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Although you don't want to laugh during sex, that might be a bad thing. I'm not sure. Yeah, have That's you done that before? Thing. I've I've done that. I've done that once or mm-hmm. twice. Yes, I do that. Oh, I was gonna say very frequently, but not very <laughs> frequently. I do that. I don't know. So there was one time. I can't remember if it was with my wife or not, but we thought it was. I just come back from Italy, so yeah, it was yeah. my wife and my girlfriend at the time and I. We thought it would be a good idea to play with Nutella. And so, it's not, <laughs> you know, kind of a sexy thing. You yeah, spread yeah, yeah. it on each other's bodies. And I spread it on her and it just looked like shit. It really, it looked like she had an accident all over herself. And I, and I started laughing because it was either laugh or speak French. And I wasn't <laughs> gonna do the latter. So I was like, this looks ridiculous. And so <laughs> we we wiped it off. Just, but yeah. I'm like, Just I'll like, go get some toilet paper. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is not doing it for me. I found out what I'm not into, and um, gold. I don't know what to. Yeah, Nutella <laughs> and what's the brown version of golden showers? Brown shower, Cleveland um, steamer. That sounds like it. Yeah, Cleveland. <laughs> you know what you should have done. You should have stayed in the bit, right? And just <laughs> and just started eating ass like that. <laughs> just, just spread it all around that area and just lap it's it like, up. Uh, we're already here. <laughs> I should have. I should have remembered Jerry's words. Stay in the bed. Stay. <laughs> Stay. Oh god. Holy shit. <laughs> well, well, Kingsley, we'll, we'll keep talking about you, but this is a self-help podcast, so we're going to okay. give some advice as we keep chatting. I okay. have to inspire us. I've got this quote to help us All answer right. these questions that fans have sent in, but yeah. before I send in mine, I like to ask my guests, do you have any inspirational quotes that help get you through your dark days? Anything that just inspires you to be that smiley Kingsley that you are? Um, <clears throat> it's a quote. Um, no pressure. Every I know, single right? guest <laughs> has been able to come up with one on the spot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, one that really just sticks out is um, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Uh, I think Michael Scott quoted that by <laughs> Wayne, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> I remember so, seeing in the office on the whiteboard, it's like Wayne Gretzky, <laughs> Michael Scott Michael right Scott. below it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It, it, it stands true if you, if you don't take the shot. And, and that's like, because I've, I've known so, so many opportunities where I, like, I felt like I should have done something, but I didn't. And now you just live with the regret, like what if? So, gotta oh, live by it. Keep shooting your shot. <clears throat> I think that's one of the most that that's a quote that I live by a lot because I'm yeah. a sensitive little boy. I don't <laughs> like being rejected. I don't like being told no. And exactly. w- when I when I come on or when I get guests for the podcast, I get a lot of no's, and so. It hurts. It stings a little bit, much less mm-hmm. than before. But what what makes it all worthwhile is when guests say yes, like you. I was so nervous yeah. because <laughs> Rose, God bless yes. her, amazing <laughs> Rose. I just a big shout out to Rose because I think she would shout out like, to Rose. Rose. <laughs> Rose. <laughs> Merci, Rose. <laughs> She she connected us and and uh, right on the spot and she was like you yeah. should go on his podcast and I was like fuck Rose everybody <laughs> and their mother has a podcast and so you're just saying hey you should go on this random dude's podcast <laughs> and so I was like oh is he gonna say no and you were like 
I'll think about I'll it. I was thinking, I'll think, I was thinking, oh, is he going to say no? Because, like, I didn't know if he had, like, a thing or whatever. So I was like, uh, I don't know if he even wants me on. I was like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> oh, God, this is, this is amazing. You see, we're, Look both, at us we're now. both afraid of Virginia. I know, laughs galore. I feel like we've hit more laughs right. per minute than any episode <laughs> I've done. And this has been, so, I don't know, 200 whatever. 200. <laughs> That is the best. See, this is what makes it. You are washing yes. away the sting of rejection, Kingsley. Exactly. And, and we both took that shot together. We took the basketball, and I think we joined Just our hands together. together. And then let's <laughs> lay it up. <laughs> and we took it, and we made the shot. A swish. Swish that bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, what I'm trying to say is beautiful quote. Thank you, Kingsley. Anytime. I've got my quote. And this quote is not by no person. This quote is actually by a robot. And the robot's name is Inspirobot. And what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man and mash them together for a beautiful really? quote. Yes. So I'll read it. We'll try and figure out what it says. All right. And 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 give it a we can give it a rating like from from human to Skynet how <laughs> how is it where does it stand oh, okay all right so this week Inspirebot says loyalty comes before safety loyalty comes before safety. Oh, shoot. You know what? I think this was actually from Mafia Bot because this doesn't seem like an <laughs> yeah. inspirational quote. <laughs> I was like, because <laughs> I was thinking something like, okay, like, should I sacrifice my body for somebody that I'm 100% loyal to? Right? Right? It's, yeah, it's like Big John being like, yo, little no Tony, don't you forget, loyalty comes before safety. <laughs> that's how i feel that all these yeah. <laughs> dude i feel like mafia would be so much more successful if they had an hr department because if they had people that were there to be able to regulate a moral compass and yeah. treated their employees better they invested a little bit in their employees i feel like it would be a much more exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. but anyway loyalty comes before safety I feel inspired. I don't know about you, but I feel like we can move on to the questions. Okay. Unless okay. you had anything else to say about no, loyalty I, comes I, before. <laughs> like, if I was working at an Amazon warehouse and I saw that sign, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, like, because <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's one of those inspirational posters with a kitten yeah. hanging from a tree. And it's like, remember, loyalty comes before safety. Because you know how they, like, enslave their employees. And they're working them gruesome hours, driving the heavy machinery. I could see that quote in there. <laughs> Holy shit. I think you're right. I, it could <laughs> definitely be at Amazon. It's oh, yeah. especially in the warehouse department. God damn it, Jeff Bezos. Fucking Jeff. Oh. <laughs> well, that was inspiring. I'm glad that we ended on a happy note there. Was, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, all right. Let's dive into these questions. We've got this let's first question. It. It's from Reddit. It's found by our fan, Alan. Thank you, Alan. It says, surviving winter. How to stop craving the sun? I live up north. It's gloomy and cold outside. I crave sun, sea, and hot air so bad I can't focus on my job. Normally, I have a beach holiday abroad in December that recharges me for a month or two. I also go to the indoor pool and sauna. Both are not possible due to COVID and lockdown. I started taking vitamin D supplement and going for a walk during lunchtime. I mostly crave feeling the sun on my skin and immersing myself into water i'm literally restless thinking about that are there any tricks to stop it i want to punch my brain <laughs> that's the end okay hmm. so kingsley so, 
Have you ever craved the sun? I've never craved. I've never used that word. God, dude, I'm craved. just craving. I craving need the sun. sun. No, I live. we live in Arizona, so we do our best to run away as much as possible. That's true. But if I crave the sun, um, and where, where does he live again? He says he lives up north. So I just imagine him being a Game of Thrones character. Yeah, right. <laughs> In the frozen tundra somewhere. Um, I don't know. Like, Let's say Flagstaff. Okay. Flagstaff. I don't know. You can, I mean, are tanning beds still open? You can bring a laptop, get a sun as a screensaver. Or I'm sure there's like a 10-hour loop of the sun on YouTube somewhere. And then, oh my god! And then just, I don't know. <laughs> just stare at it. Just stare. At it. Put the little sunglasses on. And... <laughs> oh my god! That, hey, that's a good idea. I like that. You can also just buy a freaking tanning bed. I'm sure if you go on Wish.com, exactly. maybe it'll show up where you can only tan one hand at a time, but you can get one. It'll work. Yeah. And you get that sun you need. It's okay. also, unless you live in freaking Alaska, you get sun. There is yeah, sun there is outside. Sun. You just got to so, go for it. <laughs> I love that. What if, what if you dress, just like they say, dress, like, dress for the job you want. Dress for the vacation that you want. So dress as exactly. if you want sun. Hawaiian yeah. shirt. Tommy Bahama. <laughs> Got the short, little short shorts. <laughs> short shorts. You got to go real short. Shorts, May, real short. Maybe just the speedo. Get a hammock <laughs> installed right behind your desk and just lay out on the speedo. Put the sunscreen on the cheek. <laughs> One down the nose too. Even you got to do the the T cross right across the face. You know, essential. Absolutely. Exactly. That's good skin care. Sunscreen on and you're good. Oh, and you're golden. Okay, that's great. Perfect. All right. Well, answered. So we're going to move on to the next segment. This next segment is called Positive Spin. And Kingsley, I put this segment in because I feel like whenever we encounter problems, our brains, they go to the negative. And you just start thinking, oh, no, what a disastrous thing this is. And you don't start to think about how you can get past your obstacles. So what I've created is a segment called Positive Spin where I'm going to give you a scenario or set of scenarios. And you're yeah. going to think of the bright side, the positive. Make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Got it. So Kingsley, here's the scenario. You're going to have to come up with some positives for this. Got it's going to get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. From this point on, you find yourself, you wake up and you're thinking, oh, my God, I am high. And then you cannot get sober. You're just high all the time. I don't know if you got bit by a radioactive <laughs> bong or what happened, <laughs> but you find yourself, you're constantly high, stoned constantly out of your mind. High. You're on marijuana. Mm -hmm. Bright side. Bright side. I had a few bright sides. Uh, <laughs> one, Whataburger is open 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and uh two um i'll have like every night will be probably like the best night's sleep i've ever gotten in my life <laughs> like so you gotta think oh. of the positives so like really good sleep i love whataburger so whataburger is gonna be an everyday thing Bro, and yes. um and qt has skittles so i'm good oh beautiful <laughs> wonderful by the way if you have that frame and the diet of whataburger and skittles I envy your metabolism because <laughs> it's good. I would be a blimp if that was my diet. I feel like uh, by the time I'm 40, it's all going to break down and I'm just going to die. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> your body will just fall apart it's and you'll be like, <laughs> oh, God. But that's when my body just clocks out. It's like, all right, we're done. Just clock well, out. You know what they say at Whataburger. Loyalty comes before safety. So as long <laughs> yeah. as you're loyal to that burger. It's, it's all that matters. 
<laughs> so, okay, that's, that's good. All right, good positive spin. So now, scenario is getting a little worse. You mm-hmm. find that you're constantly high, but it's not marijuana. You are rolling. You're on E, baby. Just ecstasy 24-7. Ecstasy 24-7. Um, never been on ecstasy, so I don't know what it feels like. <laughs> uh, nor have I, so I can't help you. That, but from what, <laughs> from, from what, from what I've seen, heard, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, from what I've seen and heard, that it's um, probably like the best feeling if you're touched and music. So uh, on the bright side, let's see, positive side. Um, the hell is a positive for ecstasy? <laughs> I'm on ecstasy. I feel good all the time. Like it's you're happy. It's a happy drug. So uh, one, I'm constantly happy, and that being on top of me already constantly being happy is like a highly concentrated dose of happiness, which I'm sure will create some type of superpower or. I At least good. a vaccine yeah. for COVID. I mean, Jesus, that <laughs> happiness. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> I just I imagine, like, from that point on, I would probably, like, secrete some type of fluid that I could just wipe on people and make some feel good. <laughs> Be careful. Louis C.K. said the same exact thing. <laughs> But I was even thinking about that, but <laughs> but I, oh, shit. I, I did hear though that Moderna they did say that inside the secret ingredient to their vaccine is just Kingsley smiles. It's so Kingsley juice, yeah. King- <laughs> Kingsley fluids. They're just secreted <laughs> naturally and in a safe way. <laughs> all right. Okay. That's good. I guess ecstasy, maybe that was a bad example because you just feel good all the time. So, yeah, yeah. all right. You, you <laughs> yeah. did good. All right. Last one. You're mm-hmm. high all the time, but it's bath salts. <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Then I'll just pause. No, I get to. Try brains because like, that's when you turn, <laughs> you, you turn into a zombie and you, <laughs> what does zombie want? Brains. Oh, fuck. So I'll just just eat people for the rest of my life. Oh, fuck. I'll oh. eat people. I'll eat everybody who's at the drive-thru at Whataburger. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, I love that. I love that. Because my dad, he used to take me hunting and he'd be like, the game has a flavor of what it ate. So that hit home <laughs> for me. That hit- <laughs> oh, shit. Beautiful. Nice. All right, good. Well, I'm glad that you were able to, to think of positive things for all three of those drugs, especially oh, yeah. the bath salts. <laughs> we're- <laughs> Kingsley, we're going to move on to our last question and then we will bid each other Adieu. Adieu. <laughs> Bid you adieu. Farewell. <laughs> so Mademoiselle. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do that, here's the question. It's from Reddit. It's by our fan, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole, for sending this question. It says, oh, careful, this is a long one. I was robbed at gunpoint 10 plus years ago, and I'm being asked to speak at the person's parole hearing. I'm going to be vague as I don't want too much personal information getting out, but over 10 years ago, I was robbed at gunpoint. He not only stole some cash, debit cards, and credit cards, useless, and a pack of cigs, and my electric pencil sharpener, which irks me to this day. He tried to take my car. I refused, and he ran off. I was not the only person he was found guilty of robbing at gunpoint, as well as some others in separate crimes. Uh, I was contacted that he's up for parole, and on occasion, I still have vivid dreams of it, but not often. This wasn't his first brush with the law by any means. He sent me letters, and he seems remorseful. How can I tell if he is? How do I know what's bullshit? I actually thought about asking for his parole to be granted, but that I wanted something else, like a one-cent check each month with, sorry, I robbed you, or something on the memo line for three years so that I know at least once a month, he has to remember what he's done. 
help? I don't, I, there wasn't really a, a much yeah, of a question like, there. So what stood out to me was what really irked him. He stole cash, debit cards and credit cards, useless. pack of cigarettes, useless, all useless, <laughs> electric pencil sharpener, gold. <laughs> Absolute gold, prized possession. Right. Prized. And this was 10 years ago. I've never seen, oh, you know what? Okay. I was like, I've never seen an electric pencil sharpener, but I have. It was the ones you stick in, but they're plugged in. So I'm thinking cordless, but 10 years ago. Okay. So I get it. Um, it's, yeah, that's the one I imagine too. Like that big old box, almost like a yeah. carton of sardines where you yeah. stick it. <laughs> What is he doing carrying that around yeah, on his like, person? <laughs> Does he have a fanny pack for it? Does he have a special <laughs> compartment? In a, I don't is know. Is he an elementary school teacher? Or what? <laughs> Let's he's deep dive into be. his life. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be an elementary school teacher. Because one, he's trying to do a punishment that teaches a lesson. Sending one penny each month with I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> and, and then also the electric pencil sharpener. I think he was a teacher. Oh, yeah. he is a teacher. Definitely. He probably taught French too. He seems annoying like that. Okay, class, let's learn a little bit of French. Ooh la la. Put that your pencils and your pieces of paper. <laughs> I brought my own personal election chocolate. <laughs> but I do charge for you to use it. <laughs> One cent <laughs> Oh my God. The only, and I will repeat, the only French person that I have respect for is Lumiere, the candlestick holder from. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll give, okay. Him, top two would be him. Second, Pepe Le Pew. Oh, Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Because All right. <laughs> I thought that's where you got your, your skills from because you did the seductive sexual. <laughs> <laughs> buy my buy my shit, please. <laughs> Ooh la la. Just start kissing from the pinky all the way up to the neck. I wouldn't shower. I would just let out a huge fart before and um, <laughs> that's how I got it. Pepe. Yeah. Pepe Le Pew. Okay, so I think what we're saying is that the best French people that we know are not real. They're just fictional characters. <laughs> But th this person got robbed. They got their, their cherished electric pencil sharpener stolen. And they're asking, I don't know how long this guy was in jail for, but what do you think, Kingsley? Do you think if you got robbed at gunpoint? Also, uh, he, the car, they were like, give me your car. No. 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 All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you. Bye, right, buddy. He, like, he didn't put up a fight for that. <laughs> he said no. He was like, well. I tried. <laughs> all right. I, all I got is a gun. I mean. <laughs> uh, so, um, I don't know. It, anyway, sorry. I was asking. Um, have, yeah. Like, have what, you ever which, gotten robbed at gunpoint? Uh, no. I don't think I've had. No. Okay. Uh, as a joke, with an airsoft gun, yes. Because I think it was like, it was damn near 10 years ago. Uh, when airsofts were cool. Uh, were they ever cool, actually? <laughs> I don't know. Um, At one point. But there was, like, there was, like, handguns that we all had, but then our friend had came with a shotgun, airsoft gun. <laughs> and he just robbed me for all my little yellow pellets. And I was like, here, take it. And, dude, <laughs> he showed me, like, he shot my, because uh, I had, like, those little curtains, those vertical curtains. Oh, he yeah. He shot, shot the curtain the bullet went through the plastic curtain. So I was like, oh yeah, take whatever you want. <laughs> I, gave, I gave him whatever he wanted. I was like, yeah, take it. You got, you got oh, me. <laughs> so do you think it's right that he send you each month a BB pellet and say, I'm sorry for robbing you? Is that a just? That would just, yes. If he sent me a bullet a day, until um, I had a pack of 300. If he sent me one a day until I was uh, replenished of my beans that he stole, 
we'll call it even. And then I'd have to shoot him one time with a shotgun. Just did he? <laughs> did he, he shoot you? He never. He tr- he shot me. That's the the bullet that that missed and hit the hit the little uh, blind. <laughs> so I, I had the pillow and I ducked and then the, he shot and it just went right over my head. Holy shit! So he was shooting at you though. Yeah, he only he did one shot after I said no the first time because I didn't believe he'd shoot me. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh my god, dude! I feel like I'm in that moment right now. I'm shaking. <laughs> Holy shit! So I think yeah, you have the right to shoot him with the shotgun. Oh yeah, maybe somewhere in Just, the maybe the the calf. I don't know. Uh, stomach, head, wherever. <laughs> Just face, <laughs> eyeball. Eyeball. Public execution style. Just whatever oh, we needed. <laughs> Have him with the blindfold tied up to a little pole. <laughs> Rip the blindfold <laughs> off. <laughs> Let the sun blind his eyes. Because we're in North fucking <laughs> foreign fucking Flagstaff. With no sun. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, um, please sell tickets to this. This will be, be great. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, my goodness. Oh. All right. Well, I think we gave him his advice. I think you're granted for parole, but there is some punishment to prove his contrition. Exactly. So, beautiful. So. All right. Well, that is, we have reached the end of the podcast. Kingsley, yes. I just wanted to extend a huge thank you to you for joining, being such a good sport a great person a hilarious guest and um and thank you for letting me take my shot on you yeah and thank you <laughs> yeah, I was no, like, wait let, let me let, let me backtrack wait, that one whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, i want to thank coming. you yeah <laughs> thank you for having me it's it's been amazing it was, it was super fun and uh can't wait to do it again Yes, you're welcome back anytime. I did want to ask too, what have you got going on? Where can people follow you? Do you have any shows coming up? Um, actually, I do, actually. I have one tomorrow. I don't know when this is coming out. It's probably not coming oh. out. If, you pro- if you're seeing this, it's, it's probably over already. Um, I'm at the House of Comedy tomorrow um, for a show that I don't know what it's called. Oh, it's something. Is it Comics it's Unleashed? It's a... Uh, Who's it's on with it? The, Ashley Rose and Tara Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Oh, uh, not so black and white. Bingo. Not so black and white. Pass the comedy. Um, nice. I'm doing Tempe Improv on, uh, nope, I'm doing Stand Up Live December 13th uh, for the 12 Comics of Christmas. Nice. And then you can follow me on Instagram, King of Mukamara, or you can just tag me in it, whatever. Uh, oh, I will. I will. Whatever. And it will all be in the show notes, too, so people can just click, and then they can find you, find your shows, yeah. find everything. Click the link on the bio. Click, whatever. click, <laughs> mon amis. Click, click. So that is the most fucking... Oh, my God. I'm so jealous. I've got some little bitch name, like Stephen Chitani, and you're just fucking King of Mukamura. Oh, my God. <laughs> A voice, a voice in my head bellows that name. Just like, my name Aww. in my head? Hi, my name is Stefan. <laughs> Stefan Titani. I'm Italian. <laughs> Kingsley Amukamara. <laughs> oh, you know, I should get rose petals and just coming to America the whole place. Just <laughs> every time I go somewhere, just do something like that. That'd be dope. <laughs> I don't know why you don't already. I know, yes, I should just, absolutely. Absolutely. Should you should have... <laughs> Some guy, Craigslist, probably has this service, just laying out red carpet wherever you walk. <laughs> red carpet, rose petals, it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just some random dude. <laughs> and just some casual clothes. <laughs> Super you're holding him hostage with, emotionally <laughs> and with a BB shotgun. And you're saying, look, dude, <laughs> Bob, loyalty is way more important than safety. Oh, way more. <laughs> <laughs> Lay them rose petals, please. <laughs> if you ever want to see that sun again that you crave. <laughs> <laughs> oh.